I want to talk a little bit about energy and electricity now from the customer perspective. Because we, when we talk about distributed generation, we mainly focus on this whole dance between behind the meter and in front of the meter, and, and who's hooked onto the house, and who's behind um, the substation, et cetera. But from the very beginning with electricity, from the customer's perspective, you go in, you flip a switch, the lights go on. Everything else happens behind the curtain. It doesn't matter how busy or how simple or how structured that is. And that means that the curtain isn't the meter. It's the light switch. And what's been happening in distributed generation is that the space behind that curtain is getting more and more and more crowded, which is a great thing. That's the real opportunity in distributed generation. The first major opportunity is partnerships. And it's partnerships across the board. It's technology partnerships. So as an example, and I don't actually know if the press release on this is out yet, so a little inside information. Um, One Earth Energy is now partnering with UC Riverside to do a test on a new high efficiency solar panel. So we're continuing to do new tech. We're continuing to partner with companies with our amazing academic resources in Southern California to be able to continue to drive costs down, to increase efficiency in technology. Finance partnerships. Um, and sales and supply chain partnerships. The reason One Roof is structured as a platform company is nobody's really cracked the nut on what's the best way to sell residential solar. And it may be because there isn't one. Multiple different sales channels, multiple different customer bases. And in the same way, you've got a lot of fulfillment services that all work slightly differently because all the rules for permitting and interconnection, et cetera, as Rick mentioned, uh, get a little bit different depending on where you are. So those partnerships, are all gonna kind of be based on that last really important piece, which is data. Uh, and rumor has it data is also something that we do relatively well here in San Diego. I don't know where I picked up that impression, but I have an entire row of very, very intelligent gentlemen who I'm sure can help with that. And we're not just talking about energy data. You're talking about customer data. You're talking about systems data. And you're talking about rate data. So Jason asked me to really quickly speak to net metering 2.0. Um, I'm going to jump over it really quickly, other than saying that obviously the PUC made the right decision. And the reason actually for that right decision is because it is a bridging solution. The PUC effectively said, look, we know that extending net metering for four to five years is not going to create an existential crisis for the electricity markets in California, and most of this is all about getting us to the point where we can get into time of use pricing. And time of use pricing and eventually dynamic utility rate pricing is where the real opportunities really start to show up. Because the more flexible and the more dynamic your pricing, the more you increase efficiencies in the market and the more you broaden opportunities for clean tech companies across the board of all kinds. Because you are increasing ancillary services revenue. You've got bundling possibilities with solar plus storage plus EV. You've got Internet of Things data. Did I mention data? Uh, for all of that to get tied together. So I want to hit on one third point in my last minute, I think is what I've got, um, because we love to talk about these things in events like this, in conferences, et cetera. We all talk about, okay, so there's opportunities for partnerships and you can pull all the tech together and we'll be able to do all of these things. And we kind of lose sight, this is, I won't say a challenge or a warning, but something as a quick reminder, we lose sight of that first point, which is with all of these new products and all these new partnerships and all of these new opportunities for profit, don't forget about the customer. It seems kind of an obvious statement, but we have a tendency to not talk about them when we're in events like this. Or we talk about the customer as one monolithic group. Whereas, really, nothing that we're talking about is about bringing anything in front of the curtain. What we're actually doing is we're providing a view behind the curtain to various different customers, and customers are going to use that capability differently. But outside, from looking at it from the outside, behind the curtain is kind of a mess. And as it gets more crowded, and as it gets more complicated, we have to be more transparent and more proactive in engaging our customers. Because the reality is, is that delivering a great customer experience is still what defines great companies. That has not changed, and it's not going to change. 
And so it's one of the reasons that we drive for that every day, that 1% of G. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, Emily.